I'm not very excited about this video. I'm cutting out coffee for the next seven days and replacing it with matcha tea. I love everything about a warm cup of coffee, from the ritual of hitting the kettle and setting the paper, to the feeling of superiority it gives me over simpletons that don't know the true pleasures of a morning well lived. And after three to five cups a day for years, I've developed a pretty serious dependence on it. So I'm trying to break that addiction with the best that the land of the rising sun has to offer. Matcha isn't just your run-of-the-mill, sawdust-in-a-bag tea. It holds a huge cultural significance in Japanese society, from the early days of Buddhist monks and samurai to tea ceremonies and now modern-day confectionaries. Getting this green gold requires a pretty intense process, from tea selection to steaming and grounding, before becoming what we know as matcha powder. I've chosen to consume matcha for two main reasons. Because it's the tea leaf itself that we consume, it's arguably one of the healthiest forms of beverages that you can have. And also because of the high caffeine content, in hopes for not only a healthier outcome, but also a productive one. I'm looking to see what it does to my productivity, my anxiety, my acid reflux, and even my bowel movements in the coming days. And if it can be something I use to completely cut coffee out of my life. This is going to be my first cup of matcha. And for this week, the things that I'm really looking for are does it have a taste I can enjoy? Can I get out of the house quickly on a busy morning? And does it provide me with the type of energy I'll need? This is surprisingly tiring. My forearm is activated doing this. It's recommended to get this bamboo whisk and a wooden spoon to get the best out of the matcha powder. And to use the whisk, I needed this bowl. That's three items I had to purchase, compared to a cup of coffee that would just require a cup and a filter. But I'm curious to see what my energy levels will be. According to many matcha enthusiasts, despite its lower caffeine content, matcha supposedly gives a much longer lasting and gentler caffeine high than coffee, with one cup of matcha providing six to eight hours of energy and a gentle fall off compared to coffee, which has a two to three hour high that can cause jitteriness and anxiety, followed by a crash in energy levels. I'm skeptical about this, but we'll find out. It doesn't have that same kick in the face instant wake up that coffee has. It's more of a slow, earthy kind of taste to it. If I'm being completely honest, I'm not really a fan of the taste. Uh, it's just my preference, but We'll see how the energy plays out later on in the day. I also wanted to find out how difficult it would be to find ready-made matcha drinks. There are about 58,000 convenience stores in Japan and about two and a quarter million beverage vending machines, all of which I'm certain you can grab a coffee at, but I've never seen anyone grab matcha at them. Mm, Despite matcha's increasing popularity, globally it's still just a fraction of the coffee market, which means that matcha is still somewhat of a niche item, getting it may be difficult or a little bit more costly. After a couple hours of searching, I found it at Lawson's, and thankfully so, because I stayed up late that night, and the next day was the first real test for matcha. So I just finished my first full day of work without any coffee whatsoever, and I feel really exhausted right now. I slept pretty bad last night as well, so I came to Lawson here to get a matcha latte so that I can see if that would bring back my energy a bit. I was really concerned about consuming matcha before my evening routine because of how it might affect my sleep. I usually drink a cup of coffee, exercise, then get to work. But the short energy lifespan of coffee means that once it's more than three hours of my bedtime, it wouldn't have any serious impact on my sleep. However, matcha's energy is longer lasting. Supposedly matcha is much better for sleep than coffee because of a compound called L-theanine, which is found naturally in tea. It's said to reduce stress and anxiety and induce relaxation without drowsiness. And I can confidently say that how it didn't affect my sleep, but I didn't notice any improvement in the quality of sleep that I had either. 
It did, however, help me with my anxiety. Usually by Wednesday, I'm so wired up with coffee and lack of sleep that I begin blocking out time by minutes to get things done. But I wasn't on edge as much during this past week. I was able to relax a lot more. Of course, this video is going to be late because of it, but it did help with the anxiety. Now, this is really important for anyone considering to make the switch from coffee to matcha. I skip breakfast every morning and I'm usually in a rush, so I drink my coffee fast and I leave. But apparently, consuming matcha on an empty stomach, especially hurried, can upset your stomach because of something called tannins. I had stomach aches for four of the five days I consumed matcha only. It usually went away after a couple of hours, especially once I ate, but the most effective part of my day became really uncomfortable. You might not have this issue if you eat breakfast though. This was just my experience. But on the other hand, I felt extremely healthy. The usual dehydration I felt wasn't there, and I felt as if my energy levels were more balanced throughout the day. It also made my bowels unpredictable, which of course isn't great because I'm a teacher, and it would sometimes happen at uncomfortable times during class. But it might be because my body is adjusting to this new type of food, because I found that going to the bathroom overall was a much more pleasant experience. And after experimenting with matcha for a week, is it worth it to switch? It's definitely a healthier alternative that gets the job done, but I like coffee too much.